uh, I will also advise us to listen to some of the teaching I do in our first service. Uh, we, we are learning about finances. One of the things that uh, I want us to uh, be so strong in this year is the area of finance. I don't believe in poverty. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't believe in poverty and uh, I believe God has called us to live a life of increase and progress. Uh -huh. Then no, is he here? Then is You know how to record? Just just tap record on this thing. I'm assuming you know it. <laughs> Somewhere I start recording. Have you seen it? And just just click that. We just need to have it. Amen. Uh not pray for finance. We give to get finances. Uh, we don't pray for finances. It is not balanced. I think you need to balance it. We give to have finances. Everywhere I preach, I was in Nairobi last Sunday and I was speaking in our spiritual father's church. And I began than that. We don't tell God, give me. What do we do? We give. And when you give, you release something from above. Amen. You know, there are things that move God. For those of you who have parents, or any other person that looks like parents, and sometimes you, you give something to them, or kama uko na shosho uko na shosho mali you know the way your show bless you you know when you just do something like this she feels like hata umempatia 50 bob tu si pesa nyingi how does she hmm? anaza kuongea that is how you touch god when you give amen that's how you teach God. You you see, you're like, and then when you touch God, what happens is whatever you require is released. And there are so many types of giving that is there in the scriptures. Uh, there's one I began preaching in morning service. Uh, it was already on our YouTube channel. You can see it. Mm. This is about seed. I know people talk about seed. But I, I'll, in this session and next session, I'll be talking about tithe. Because tithe is most important. Uh, God has ways through which he blesses us. God has his own ways, his own principles. Now, until you learn his principles... You might not, uh, it's called what? You might not connect with him. God has a language that he speaks. And you know, there are so many languages that are on the face of the earth. And if you do not understand the language of somebody, it becomes hard. The principles that God uses is like his language. It's like his language. And you know, he put these principles in place for anybody who wants to meet him. Now, the Bible says Moses knew the ways of God. But the Israelites saw the act of God. Have you read that verse? In the book of Psalms? Moses knew the ways of God. And the Israelites, chapter 107, sorry, 103, 
of Psalms verse 7. I want you to read that. There's something I want to establish before I go into that. Uh, 103. Just read it. Psalms 103. Verse 7. What does your Bible say? He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of God. What does that mean? When the Bible says he made God known, he made uh, his ways known unto Moses and then his acts unto the children of Israelites. This is what it simply means. Have you heard this very common statement that people say that God is mysterious? Have you heard of that statement? God is? Do you still believe that God is mysterious? Myster God is mysterious. God is not mysterious. It's only that uh, you have not invested enough time and invested in enough knowledge of God to know God. That is why God looks mysterious. If you look at all men of God that God has called, it is like they know God like they know themselves. And if you consider to study their lives, you might realize that they have taken more time with God than us. Like they are old in, older than us. They have got enough information. They have about God. Now it's like they understand how God works. And they work the way God, they, they move the way God expects. One of the biggest challenges of every believer is to believe God. I don't know why we are called believers. <laughs> because we, we, we study the Bible, we catch this thing, but whenever sometimes the word of God is spoken, you are like, ah. I call them non-believing believers. You say you believe, but when the scriptures are read, you don't, you don't believe. So what I'm trying to say is this. When, when the Bible says God uh, made known his ways to Moses. In other words, how does God operate? That's the big question. How does he operate? Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 5 downwards. Around verse 8, 9. His ways are not our ways. Eh? His, uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And his ways are not our ways. As the heaven is far from the earth. That is how our thoughts are far. Why should we accept it to be far now? That was for the Old Testament, not the New Testament. Praise the Lord. That was for the Old Testament. Today, one of the reasons why teaching was introduced in the church is because so that you know the ways of God. So that you begin flowing with God. Moving with God. So, what I'm trying to say is this. There's, there's already a system God has put in place before he created man. Through which that man has to seek God. So you have to school yourself in that system he has put in place. Now, we say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The way. I'm talking too much about the way. The way is, is the way of operation. Is how, how does God operate? You know, for so many years, we have talked about God. Where is God? In heaven. <laughs> Do you have any relationship with... There's a way we, we look at God. But the truth of the matter is, when you get, to, get enough of the word of God, you're going to understand God. 
And when you understand God, you will understand everything about life. I hope I am clear. I'm saying you know God, you know all things about life. In fact, when you get to know God, you realize that there should not, there should not be any problem in your life. Any problem that is on the face of the earth or in your life is a product of lack of knowledge. Is that true? And if you have a specific problem, you look for a person who has that solution. Because the person knows you gave you give him money. Is that true? Hmm? How problem collects money from you? Can you imagine? And that's why God does not want people who are ignorant. If it is possible, increase knowledge in your life. I mean if it's possible. By whichever means. The more the way that God delivers us from problem is through knowledge. It's true. And in this case, you know, last month and this month, we are talking about financial excellence or financial abundance. Do you think we can have enough money more than what you need? Is it possible? Uh, let me ask this question. Do you believe you can get more money than you're getting now? Ten times than what you have right now. It's possible. And there's no problem of having money. Amen. There's no problem. I want a radio station in this town. I need five million. The other day we were in Nairobi. I was told there's a, a land cruiser going for 1.4k. 1.4m, sorry. <laughs> 1.4m. And you see, if you have money, you have already bought it. Otherwise, you stand there and tell God, please, you know, we don't have money. You, why don't we have it? And we are spending too much money on giving to taxi January and February. Simply, 8,000 every week. We need money. And God is not that much, how can I put it? That much selfish, you know, sikupati. Mungu amekazia pesa, ameshikilia. Utaona ngayo. There's a way people, eh? God, if it is in your ability, he wants you to have as much as you want. Praise the Lord. He wants as much. I am saying as as much as you want. And I want you to open your mind to enough money. Not that few coins that is in your stomach, not the stomach, in your pockets. <laughs> the, you know, the level of money that you hold or that will circulate within your life is only what your heart has allowed. Some of us have have limited God so that you think that you should not get more than 70,000 per month. More than 10,000. Mungu hata nikipata shirini per month, sawa. Mungine, God wants you to have as much. You see, one of the things I believe when I preach the gospel, uh, you saw here, when some of you are here last Sunday, I only, we only brought here people that I've been part of this ministry from the time it began, two years. And I said, we are the one funding and preaching. Amen. We're not looking for Muzungu out there. I think Muzungus are everywhere here. Amen. God can put money in your hand that can even shock you. And there is a way that we can have this. So the ways of God, when I talk about the ways of God, how does it operate? Does it operate? One of the things that he established is called sight. Out of the 100%, he just needs how much? 10%. 10%. Let's read chapter number. Chapter number 14 of the book of Genesis. 
And I will just be reading some few verses down there. Now, if I give you the context of the chapter, this chapter 14, there's a fight happening between five kings and four kings. So five kings have joined and four kings have also joined to fight. And then, one of the king is the king of Sodom where Lot is. So what happened is that uh, I think verse 1 and 2 of that you, you can see where the Bible talks about that. Uh, maybe to cut it short. Now, the team that are on the side of the kingdom of Sodom were overcome by the other kings. And Lot, together with everything he had, were taken into captivity. In fact, everything was taken from him. Not only him. All that are in those four kingdoms. I think they should know. I, I, I think, I don't know whether the, fifth, the, the, the five kings won or the four kings, whichever it is. But where, Solo, where, where this man called Lot is, uh, they were over, over, overtaken by these people. And then when, they, when they, they were taken away, somebody told Abraham that Lot has been taken captive together with all the people therein. You remember in chapter 13, he separated from Abraham. It is very dangerous not to be in the cycle of believers because anything can happen. For him, he, he thought uh, Sodom was too green, so fertile, it can bring forth lots of fruits. What did he do? He chose that side. But the Bible says the people of Sodom and Gomorrah are exceedingly wicked. Hey. Exceedingly. And in fact, God is about to punish that land. And for him, he goes where? If you have association, so much association with people who don't love God, you have to be careful. You can find yourself in destruction anytime. And from the time Sodom entered there, distress to Maranihi, Maranio, problem everywhere. So in this case, all that he had, the Bible says in chapter 13, the possession that Lot has, together with that one of Abraham, was too big that the land cannot hold both of them. But that thing that he carried and went into Sodom, now he has already been taken captive together with all he has. The Bible says, Abraham went to fight. The Bible tells us that he has 318 soldiers in his house. That is Abraham. I want you to hear that. Ah, he's powerful. How many soldiers does he have? 318. You think when you talk about Abraham, he's just a nobody somewhere. He's feeding how many people? Every day. Soldiers. I'm asking a question. Do they eat just normally as we do? So having 318 of them. Right now what is happening in Ukraine? Huh? <laughs> and you know, I, I follow a lot. In fact, I listen so much. Because as we pray for them also. You know, sometimes, like the, the, the Russians, soldiers, were so hungry, to a point they had just to go and surrender themselves to the Ukraines to be fed. So, wakati vita inanza, amujui vile vita enda. So, njao umekuweza mpaka ilibidi tu, kwa sababu tuyo njao na jisarenda. Just to be. Because when the, when the, when the, when the, the fight begins, you don't understand how it goes. And then sometimes like they were they ran out of fuel, out of food, out of So that means you should have eaten well before you went there. 
So that if you stay without food for a whole week, you should, continue, you should have strength to fight. I'm trying to say this because of the 318 men. How do you go? Wakati mbuzi na ngombe zinaibwa na watu wanatoka hapa kwenda kukimbiza. <laughs> Nasikia wengine wanakula matawi ya mti. <laughs> kwa sababu mnaingia kwa, kwa hii mstuni mnafuata na 24 hours you are still walking na mungu tukua chakula simulisikia walichukua mna mkimbiza hakuna mtu alibeba chakula sasa it is 3 hours 6 hours 12 hours <laughs> no, and you have to move <laughs> should you be very weak you should not be weak wengine wanazirai kwa njia hmm? ifano hiyo nazema tunarudi wengi wanarudi <laughs> I'm trying to give you the, exa- the, the picture in this chapter 14. So, Abraham had 318 people that is using them as soldiers. So, he took those people and went after the king that took captive Lot. The Bible says they, they did beat those guys and took everything back. Abraham is not just like any other person. Not deceived, smooth, soft, very... <laughs> you know, there's always sometimes when you get born again, you want to look very soft, polite, harmless. Uh-huh. Which other words can you use? This is a man of war. Have you sung and said, Father Abraham? That Abraham is a man of war. So, Salvation has another, another side that many of us don't show. So he went and brought, beat those guys. What happened next? He took everything. In fact, even whatever belongs to them, he took it back. And the king that was taken captive, now we read it down there. Uh, verse 19. Let me read from verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most high God possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high God which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand and he gave him tithes of all and the king of Sodom said unto Abraham give me the persons and take the goods to yourself the king of Sodom what does he say? Give me the peasants and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, and that I will not take from f- that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine. Lest thou should say, I have made Abraham rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten. And the portion of the men which went with him. So this is uh, Abraham talking to the king. He says, give me the people back. You can take the possessions. But the truth of the matter is this man feels like nobody can make me rich except God. Imagine he's talking to a king. You know what speaking to a king means? Speaking to a president. Abraham was powerful than the kings of his time. Together with all that he had. But I think what I wanted to I was just showing you that because by the time they went there and they, he pursued those people. And then he got, you know when you go and fight, you take all the animals, whatever they have, you come back. When you, when you, you, you kill them, you, whatever you do. So when he was, was now coming back, uh, now what we are about, what we are to read is this. It's about how Abraham gave sight 
to this king of this king of Salem. Salem is as good as Jerusalem. A place of peace. That's what Jerusalem means. A city of of peace. The Bible says when he came back, he met Salem. There's a verse that has I wanted to have verse which is this verse. It has escaped a verse just in this chapter 14. I didn't want to read all now. It might force me to read uh, where the Bible says he gave tight 10%. Of what he got to the king of Salem. I'm trying to show you the origin of this thing called fight that we always talk about. Uh huh. Can you look for me that verse that talks about he gave 10% to this king? We are talking about Abraham. He's, he is he is the person we follow, or the example we follow. Chapter fourteen, verse eighteen to twenty. Why didn't I find it there? The Bible says, and Meliki. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 20. Oh, yeah. That one disappeared from me. Thank you. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of them. I think I was overtaken by the down teaching there. So, and blessed be the, the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And that's what I wanted to get. But I think the story that I was giving you is what overtaken me. And, uh, so the Bible says he gave, look at this. If you were here last week, every scripture that the Bible talks about tithe, it talks about all. Even this one. And he gave him tithes of all. In other words, he might have come back with some boozies. 10% of booze. 10% of condor. 10% of bulls, 10% of whichever donkeys, 10% of. Now, one thing about this tithe, one thing about this tithe, you know, if you read down and as you are moving downwards, Abraham is telling this king of Sodom, he says, I will not pick, you know, he, he went to take what the enemies have stolen from this king and many others. And the man is saying, the king is saying, you can take even my possession and anything else, but bring me the peasants, people. But the Abraham says, I will not take anything that belongs to, to you. So that you will not say that you are the one that made me rich. He says the one that makes me rich is who? Is God. Listen in Jesus' name. I know that the way that there's a way we might relate with people who don't know God. Especially when they are in position of leadership. They have might be riches. There's always sometimes as we, we look at them. But look at Abraham's perspective about this king. He says, you're not the one that made me rich. It's God who made me rich. He says, anything that belongs to you, I will not take. I will take it back to you. I know I am the one who, to, who fought and brought it, brought it back. But whatever I have brought back, whatever belongs to you, I give it back to you. And the other ones, I have it. And then from whatever he has now taken from the enemy, he gave 10% to the Most High God. So there is 
what the Bible calls this man the Bible calls Melchizedek is called who? Melchizedek is called the priest of the most high and Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God Melchizedek he gave tithe to this priest now in chapter number 7 of the book of Hebrews the Bible explains about this Melchizedek. We are going to go into that. How this person does not have a father and a, a mother. Just like Jesus, this is the way he was born. He doesn't have like what we normally talk about having our own uh, biological parents. He's not of that. So he received the sight of. So the first person who gave sight is who? Abraham. And remember, God called Abraham when the whole human race have strayed from him. They have gone away from him. And everything that he began in Abraham, everything that, every revelation that God gave to Abraham, let me make this statement. You know, there's a way we live in this life. Kuna vile tunisha, tunaishi katika idunia, siyo? There's a way we live in this life. There's a way we live. And many of the ways we live, we are the ones that have, uh, have, how do I call it, formulated for ourselves. Like for example, when a community stays there somewhere, and they sit together, and then they think of, how can we, how are we, are we going to live in this area? They create their own policies, rules and regulation of how they live. That's how people live. But when you begin getting in touch with God, God has his own ways through which you have to live so that whenever you live in line with what you expect, you will experience him greatly. Now Abraham. He is a moon worshipper. Before he met this God. This principle of tithe that you see here. He got by revelation. Nobody taught him. It is God. It is God who told him. You have to give this. There is a direct encounter with God. Listen. Listen. I think I've been speaking here in the evenings. The anointing will cause you to access revelations. Amen. I think this is heavy. <laughs> the anointing does what? It causes you to access revelation. What is revelation? Revelation is the information that God releases into your spirit that makes your life to be at liberty from every problem of this world. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you. There are ways, I'm talking about ways. I've already gone back there also. <laughs> There's a way that God wanted Abraham to live that makes Abraham totally different from everybody in the area. And this way, so this tithe is coming to him as a revelation. Let me read something to you. Genesis chapter 28. Where Joseph met God. What happens when people meet God? Hmm? chapter number 28 and I want to read from verse 10 and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran you know he was running from Isaac although also at the same time the father is Isaac is sending him to go and get a wife from among his people 
So two things is happening here. In chapter 27, Esau married the women of that area, the Hittites, Canaanites. And it was, it was terrible because God does not expect the seed of Abraham to marry from, you know, when you talk about the seed of Abraham, Abraham has been separated from other tribes. He now knows the living God. He cannot, God cannot allow you to marry from people who don't know, who don't know God. Esau married from them that didn't know God. And the Bible says, that woman the wife of Esau became a thorn in the flesh for Rebekah and the father. And Rebekah just woke up if from verse 28 you read from, from verse 1 you read. She said, if now Jacob will also marry from here, what happens? This will have more trouble because these ones, the wives of Esau is already bringing more trouble to us. So she told him, send him to go and marry from our lineage. That's how they sent to the to the uncle's house. The second reason why Jacob is leaving is because Esau will kill him because he took his birthright. So as he was running, he was on his way now. The Bible says in verse 10, And Jacob went out from Meshaba and went toward Haran. And he, he lighted up a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamt. And behold, a ladder set up on the, on the earth. And the and top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, the Lord whereon thou liest to thee the land whereon thou, thou liest, to thee will I give unto thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Wow. Imagine you're dreaming, and God is speaking to you like that. <laughs> Uh, you must know now, this is the, the, the grandchild of Abraham, Jacob. And God separated him from his mother's womb. While he was in his mother's womb, he said, I have chosen Jacob, I have hated Esau. Esau is a man who is so carnal. Kwa sababu tu ya njaa, I use a birthright. Njatu. Supu. <laughs> Supu tu. That's why God hated him. God didn't hate him because for nothing. God will not qualify you if you cannot control your stomach. There are some of us who cannot fast. Uh, <laughs> so if your stomach is causing you to go wherever you go, if your money cannot sit because of your stomach, you know there are people who because of stomach, their money cannot be saved. Yeah? Like those, those Russian guys, because of hunger they gave and <laughs> they surrendered. They should behave as men. Because they can still live. So Esa was a person like that. That's why God hated. I know sometimes people, there's a way people say God is unfair. God is not unfair. God looks at this decision you make. If your decision is not sound, he cannot choose you to serve him. He cannot. Jacob can make that soup. So Esau got into his hand. Why did he get into his hand? Just because of soup. Kama i birthright. Hata i niondelei. I niondelei. Nja. Inanifaidi nini. That's how he said. Imagine selling your birthright. The birthright in Israel then is double portion. If your father has eight acres of land and you are six, two goes to the firstborn, the remaining one acre each goes to the every son. Two, beside that you are the leader. Everybody, you are the one that he's selling that birthright. That's why God said, 
I hate him. I've hated him. He's somebody who will waste everything that is given to him. Resources. Everything. And he chose this man. So, God spoke to him what he spoke to Abraham in that dream. And then he says in verse 16, And Jacob awoke out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. He has already put an altar there. You see, people who meet God will always make a place where God will be revealed. A place of, when you know, you talk about altar. When you talk about altar, altar is a place like this now. Because a man of God has met with God, he will make sure that people will come to the God that he met. That's what he's doing here. He's putting some together. Now this is a place where people meet God. The God he met, he made sure that all his family met. Hmm? The God he met. And what happens next? Down there you can read and see verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, is God with him? From what we have just read, God is with him. But he still does not believe. You know when you are broke and you have nothing, you don't have faith. <laughs> Even if God is right there with you. The truth is God is with him. And you know he's running for life, for his life. From who? From Esau. And he has nothing. I wish he knew the, the blessing that his father spoke upon him. I mean, I wish he knew. I'm saying I wish he knew. When God has spoken some words of your life, irrespective of how broke you look, you're not broke. <laughs> I'm saying when, do not underestimate words spoken over your life. And if some words that are spoken over your life is wrong, cancel it. The Bible says you shall condemn everything that raises against you. Condemn. But when somebody says you shall be blessed, you increase. You, those words over a period of time, it will bring to you what has been spoken. Words are like container that carries what you desire. You know, on Sunday, Mama came here and she gave whatever she can and she, she said, hmm? May God go before you. May you prosper. She just said and left. That thing will happen. When she came here, she, even she was surprised. Wow, this is how you're going, continuing. This is how people are supporting this work. May God open this thing. May He. Those words are powerful. Such words were spoken on who? Jacob. Before he reached where we are here. But no, he's still not believing. He's still not believing that God is with him. That he says, If God will be with me, I'm reading verse 20, and will keep me in this way that I go, if, I know many of you have said that, and will give me bread to eat, and clothes to put on, if God will do that, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Look at that. That is like his, they are now doing some contract, yeah? Or they are writing some oil, MOUs. Hmm? If you give me food, if you cause me rich where I am going safe, <laughs> if you give me clothes to eat, to put on, and food to eat, you will be my you will be my God. I think that is also good. Eh? To some extent it is good. Because if your God cannot supply, 
cannot kill you. Cannot. He should not be God. Although, if you don't understand God now, sometimes it looks like uh, you might put some unreasonable, like one was telling me. Uh, you know when my father was taken to ICU, he said, I, God give, I gave God condition. If my father dies, he will not be my God. <laughs> Those ones might look a bit very uh, very immature. Yeah, but it's something like that here we see. Because you know, very disparate. Now you know if you had a good past, the future is also. <laughs> so he's like now standing before God. Uh, and this is a young man like many of us here. Very young man like many of us here. Who does not know what the future holds. Who does not even know where he's going because he has never gone there. This is his first time to leave his father's house. But then he's telling God. Yes, I've seen in this dream all, all that you're saying. No, God is telling him that I will multiply your descendants. From every corner, east, west, north, east. He says, they will multiply. He's not... God is showing him a great future, but he's crying about his stomach. You know, I don't have something to eat. I don't have something to put on. I don't have... If I were God, I could have spoken like Jesus to him here. Don't worry about what to eat and, and drink. Or what you put on. Because <laughs> this problem is just everywhere. <laughs> Even with them that are in there. Because as you are walking on the road, what will you eat? You know, you are like, can I arrive safely? Can I? But God is with him. And then he said, in verse 22, And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent unto thee. Wow. Of all. Are you still seeing the word all? <laughs> and when you are verses Malaka What I say, ma? All. He says, if you bless me, if you do this and that for me, I will give the tent of all that I have. Tithes are given by people who have encountered God. I'm saying who have encountered God. And if you look at what God gives to these people, be it Abraham, be it this is his grandchild, Jacob, if you reach chapter 30, now you will be shocked. How the man became so rich. You know rich? So rich. This thing that we were taught in business. Commerce. Scarcity. What were you told? Resources are scarce. Opportunity cost. You can't afford to pick the two. Choose one. That is not of God. And as I told you at the beginning, if you don't follow the principles of God, you will believe in his scarcity. I want to repeat this. Download the sermon in the morning I did. I've talked about financial abundance. The concept of seed. Panda begu. I want you to go and listen to that. The concept of God of seed is what takes you to multiplication. Multi, not addition. Every seed multiplies. Is that true? Every seed. How do you... Are you sitting here? And you came from Abraham, Adam, one man, 
multiplication. If all of you get married and you begin getting children, you're going to have more children than what your father and parents, your father and mother had. Look at all of all of you getting married. If your father, your parents had only six children, and all the six children got married, how many children would they have? grandsons and daughters there will be more than the one of the parents because you will multiply look at the trees seed in it multiplication so when we talk about tight it began with Abraham who got revelation from above. He didn't hear from anybody. This one was not taught by anybody. This guy who taught, who talked to Abraham. Uh, his father has never spoken about sight. Isaac. You don't see anything about sight. You read chapter number 24, 25, 26, 27. That's where you see uh, Isaac. Beyond 27 you only see Jacob now. 24. He was born in chapter 22. 23, Isaac, eh? 22, 23, 24, and 27. You don't see that there. He didn't speak. But there's something about seed we talk about Isaac. Then you come to Isaac, sorry, Jacob. And what do you see there? He met God. And even this man called Jacob, after this chapter 28, if you go to chapter 29, you realize how he served his uncle for 20 years. And the uncle really mishandled him. But the time that he lives there, he comes out of that, out of that place with possessions that are far beyond what Laban has ever had. Any one of you can be financially so rich. I'm saying any one of any one of us. <laughs> you can be financially so much rich. You can increase exceedingly. I'm saying you can. Increase exceedingly. Any one of you. But the question is, do you believe in the ways of God? That's the question. <laughs> do you believe in the ways of? That's the big question. This is what we read about Abraham, chapter 13, verse 1. Abraham 13 verse 1. Abraham. In <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> Chapter 13 verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he, he and his wife, and all that had, he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in... You see that? Very rich! You know, my prayer is this. Uh, you know, we in Marsabit, I am yet to see the church that will reveal God the way he is. And the truth of the matter is, God would want to show himself through somebody who is willing in a big way. You know, God is big. And if he is to show himself through somebody, then somebody must be big. <laughs> All he needs is somebody that gives himself to him. Let me tell you the truth. Many believers and as many churches as all churches, as many churches as all churches, don't believe in the Bible. They don't. 
What I mean when I, don't, when I say don't believe. What God says they do not do as expected of, of them. If we do as expected of us. Before the eyes of everyone. God will raise us up. In all areas of life. And display his greatness through us in the land. Even this aspect of finance. He can bring something great out of nothing. I'm talking about God. If he can bring water out of a rock. Hmm? Money out of a fish. You know. <laughs> huh? There is nothing he cannot do. If you believe in what he says. And believing is not mental assent. You know what mental assent is? Where you agree that God is able, but you don't mean it. If you believe, you do what he says. This is Abraham. I wish you put your name there. Instead of Abraham, you say, and Joseph was rich in cattle, in silver. In fact, was very rich. Do you have the boldness to say that? I want you to put your name there and then read that verse. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> and we are reading verse 2, chapter 13 of Genesis. And Joseph was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in did you put your name there? If you didn't smile, you didn't put your name there. No. Very rich. You know, he, he didn't say rich. He said very. Very rich in, in cattle, in silver and... These people give sight how they are. Look at chapter number 30. Let's go to chapter 30. Are you there? Verse 43. It's not talking about. It talks about. Jacob there. Verse 43. Chapter 30. And the man increased. Exceedingly. How do you pronounce that? Is that how we pronounce it? <laughs> and the man increased. Exceedingly. And had much cattle. Much eh? and made servants and made servants made men camel and donkeys. In other words, he had so many women who are serving him, so many men who are serving him. What are they doing? They're taking care of this thing they have the cattle, the camels, the donkeys. Just like Abraham. He has hundreds of people that works for him. Have you ever thought of that? Sometimes our brain is so limited. <laughs> our mind is so limited so that how much does your subconscious catch? You know, they, they tell us that you are a product of your subconscious mind. They say, if you have studied about this thing about mind and subconscious mind. This whatever your mind cannot accept. Your subconscious mind does not accept. Like for example, there are some of us who cannot believe in this place. You can get every month one million. I'm saying there are some of you who cannot believe that. And you say, Amen. <laughs> Bring in a one million every every month. If if you want to you just just make this research and see the amount of money that is circulating in your mind in in your in your account every month is the only amount you have allowed. You have not allowed beyond that because you believe it is impossible. And as long as you believe it is impossible, it is. It is impossible. As long as you believe that. 
I'm telling you this because I know what I did last year. This church cannot get over 30,000 per month. And then I said in January last year, I gave out a seed. And I said I don't want to see less than 100,000. I don't care whether you are two in this city, in this church, or nobody's inside here. I want to see 100. It has happened from last year until today. And it is still happening. Don't ask me how does it come. Yeah, it come. If, as long as we have agreed with God of 100k here, all the expenses I have for radio, for school, for whatever, has to be met. It has happened. So if you can, if you can do a deal with God, <laughs> and you tell him, I believe I do this and it will happen, he will do it. For your information, some people began giving from outside. That shocked me. Some people from outside the church here begin sending money. Kama moja, anatuma tu kama wazimu, ako garisa, anatuma ali galgalo. Anatuma pesa mbaka mina shituka. If it doesn't come from inside, it can come from somewhere. And that man is making money. I normally tell people this is a source of this church is a source of finance. People who begin putting money here, they begin expanding. Yes, the work of God is happening. The work of God is we are doing so much. And the more finances come, the more we put in this work. And as long as God is working here and the lives of people are changing then any finances that go there any any no <laughs> you see one of my my prayer for you is this because you know I I believe in the God that I preach I want to pray for you is this. Just believe in giving to God. That's what I'm telling you. Amen. Anytime you give, know that it is coming back exceedingly greater than what you give. Yeah. Bishop David Oedepo. Some of you might have heard of him. This man, that man began giving to God. Before he began giving, he read two book, books, by, a book by Copeland. It's called Managing God's Mutual Fund. I, want to, I will give you that book if you want. He read that book. And Copeland there says a lot of He was in too much debt. You know that? And when Kenneth Hagin is a spiritual father of Kenneth Copeland, when he began preaching about a financial abundance, Kenneth Copeland is a, a secular musician before he became a preacher. He was just singing a lot of songs out there, the secular songs. Then he began hearing Kenneth Hagin teaching. And then he, he did believe it is possible. But he began putting... Uh, some of the things he says in, in practice and God removed him out of debt as we are talking right now Kenneth Hagin Kenneth Copeland, he is still alive has given free of charge 27 private jets how many? all the crusades of Renard Bonke Every crusade that Renard Bonke did was adding up to 100 million and above. And all the crusade that Renard Bonke did, who financed it? Kenneth Copeland. If you hear Kenneth Renard Bonke doing conference conference somewhere, crusade somewhere, it does not eat less than 100 million. Who was giving? Now, Oyedepo 
began reading about Copland. He took that book, he sat on it. He made sure that everything that that man saw and practiced, he will do it. Today, Oyedepo is richer than even Copland on the face of the earth. The richest ministry in Africa. And you know, Oyedepo says, if you don't give sight, good luck. <laughs> he says, good luck. <laughs> and he says, I don't know how to. You know, I've, I've studied all of these great men of God. And all of them are givers. Givers, I mean. Givers. I've read all of them. Even Pastor Lai. He refuses. He refused any money that comes from abroad. From the time he began the church. Even the church that he built with over 300 million. The people in the church built. Those people when they came to church, like you people are coming here, they are not as rich as they are now. But as the man of God preached, and as they, you see, any, any meeting Pastor Lai has is the members that finance including word expression that he uses over 70k, 70m, sorry. Who is financing? When they hear that word explosion is there, people are giving 100,000, 200,000, 50,000. The other day I was saying, we have now, we have taken Mombasa spiritually he says now we are going to, we are taking now this year, we want to, want to take Mombasa economically. I will always tell you the power in your spirit man to take charge of the economy of the area. I've talked about Islam. Look at how strong they are. Always running where? Look at Hindus. How they rush. What makes believers broke is what? Their lukewarmness. You know what lukewarmness is? You understand what lukewarmness means? You are either, you're neither cold or, or hot. You know, you can easily believe the gods of others than your God. You're not bold enough Look at uh, this man, Jacob and Abraham. I know I've talked about them. I'm just finishing. They are so confident in their God. That is only God who can make them successful. Not anybody else. Do you want to have more finance this year, give more. Amen. Yes, give more. As I was standing here, somebody, I know there's a church that is planning to, to, to build, to buy a land. And the pastor just wrote me a message. Today is our day. I told him, I will, we'll, be, we'll give you 5,000. Amen. They're buying land they have there. It's called what? They're fundraising today. Redeemed Church. My Pastor Silva. See, we also want to buy land. We saw seed. Last year when Pastor Mano was doing some, we also want to buy land. And then he informed me. My target was at least of 100,000. Will give us a church. And then we had a lot of, uh, I think we did, that is when we bought this live streaming thing, cameras. How much did we send there? 50k. You know all other churches were sending 100, 1,000, <laughs> 1,000. All other churches. This church sent how much? 
50. You know, all pastors were seated there. They're like, ah. We are not giving that much because we have a lot of money. We know when we give, more will come to us. That's, why we, that's how we give. Especially Pastor Mano is my spiritual father. He blessed me, released me, go on. May God go before you. He released me. So when, when we do that, much will come. Every month I sent over 10,000 to, to the church that has given us cover. Every month. Every month I see I saw seed. Because I know we will increase like never before. And that's why something sh that shocks me every day. You know every day? Money comes into account. Every day. Sunday to Sunday. Money comes to our account. We will not lack as long as we are. We will not lack. Amen. Hata kama uwelewi mambo inaendelea inaenda aje. We toa wana. Hata mchezo yako. I know many people wonder how I do ministry. Uko kwa radio. Siju uko kwa nini. Uko kwa nini. This year we will buy land cruiser. We'll cruise around this land. Anthony, come and just check these people before I come back here. <laughs> Dennis is running for his life. So let's just uh, have some praises. Kidogo, I think. Uh, and then.